I'm live again. Can you even see me? Sometimes I have no idea what you can see or not. I'm gonna give a few minutes here, get other people in. Why does everything seem to be like it's like the monitors? Closer in or something than it used to be, or further away than it used to be. Uh, what you see is what you get, fellas. We got a couple of people on. We'll give a little bit more, a couple more minutes. Um, want to talk about starting an outdoors YouTube channel, that kind of thing. Man, it's been raining. It's just raining. I, I, I just can't get on the river. I mean, the river is so flooded and swollen. You just, it's just dangerous out there. And I'm not sure I can even get the boat in the water without the boat coming off the trailer and being drugged downstream. <laughs> All aboard. Yeah. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Little Merc. Yeah. And Jonas is in too. So, um, so yeah. Welcome and all that good stuff. Uh, it's just miserable. This has been the wettest winter I can remember. I don't know. Is it wet where you guys are? We had a real bad drought a few years ago. It was so bad. It didn't rain for like probably six months or something. And now it's just, just the opposite. It's like we're getting a hundred year flood and a hundred year drought all in within about five years or something. But um, uh, I usually try to give a few minutes before I start and just kind of chit chat, let people get on. Um, and then we'll, then I'll jump in and see if we can get a few more people on or not. Yeah. And you know, you're in Lincoln. Okay. No, I don't think I know anybody from Lincoln. What part of Alabama is Lincoln in? I haven't been, um, I'm not sure. It's just, it's just so, it's just, it, it's just stupid. Wet. <laughs> it's just, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, uh, yeah, but, um, you know, it might be March. It might really be March before, we, before I can get out on the river at this rate. I mean, they were already, you know, next week, next week this time it'll be March. So it may very well be March before I can get out because I need to test those jugs that I had made, but I hadn't been able to get out. I don't want to get out while it's raining. Oh, okay. Other side of Talladega. Okay, yeah, yeah. I've, I've made it. I've made it to Talladega. So yeah. All right, that's cool. Um. Um. Let's see. All right. So I guess we'll just go ahead and get started. Now, start and then restart as pe more people get on. That's just kind of how this works. That's kind of how I do it, at least. Um. I got my clipboard. How to start a uh, an outdoor. <sighs> How to start an outdoors YouTube channel in three steps. I'll just give you the three steps straight up front, and I'll repeat them as uh, as time goes on. How to start a YouTube channel in three steps. First, you go through your life. You pick something. Um, you go through your life, pick something you love, and pick something that's not being addressed in uh, on YouTube, right? Number two. Learn something, learn the language of video in filmmaking and motion picture, right? Doesn't mean you got to go to film school, but you need to learn something. I'll expound in a little bit, all right? Uh, number three, um, you know, learn about search engine optimization, especially video search engine optimization. If those are the three things, I mean, that's what you have to do. So number one, go through your whole life. You know, look at your whole life, look back on your life, look... Um, Look at what life, look what you used to do as a kid that you love to do, that you don't do anymore, that you wish you could do more of. Look, think about things that you always thought about doing, but never had a, either a chance to do or want to get into or recently gotten into or whatever it is. Um, and you can you know, do those sorts of things because anybody can just get their cell phone to start dumping out content on YouTube. And I'm always looking over there to check the other monitor. I have two monitors. But uh, the thing is, there are 
tons and tons of videos on YouTube. Tons and tons of um, videos being uploaded all the time. There's way more content on YouTube right now than you can possibly watch for the rest of your life, right? So it's ever growing. And there's no end in sight. So the real question is, if you add to, what are you actually adding? If there's an infinite amount of, you know, sort of space and knowledge and all this stuff on YouTube, what are you, if you add anything, what have you really added, right? So what you need to do is uh, find something that's not being addressed or find something that is um, not, you know, you, you have to find a way to meet people's needs or wants or something, right? So that's one of the reasons why I do a lot of teaching. Like uh, there's a lot of people out there who want to figure out how in the world do I get an affordable outboard? I'm tired of fishing from the bank. I just inherited my uncle's little 10 foot John boat. How do I, you know, get a, an affordable motor, right? Well, that's one of the reasons why you see me talking about mud motors and stuff. I haven't done more of that, but I plan on doing some upgrades to it this year just to see how far I can push it without blowing up another motor, <laughs> which I'm crazy, but Hey everyone! Oh, what, how do you say that? Farmall fanatic? Is that? Fan, I can't can't see. I don't, I don't have very good eyesight, guys. <laughs> so just work with me. Um, and um, I'm assuming you can hear me. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You. I guess you can. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes the audio gets tricky. So my point is, go through your life, find something you love, but either find, but also. It needs to be something that is needed in the marketplace, or maybe you have a unique way of approaching things like I do, fishing with hand lines and using live bait with fly rods and things like that, uh, that you can actually help change the way people think about something. Because if it's just what people have already seen, then they're just not going to watch. It's all, you know. Uh, so number one, just to uh, recap again, uh, Number one of how to start a YouTube channel is just go through your life, past, present, future. You know, look at the things in the past that you used to do that you want to do again or in some form. Or look at the things that you're doing now that you do. A lot of people do all kinds of things in the outdoors. They're, they're already hunting. They're already fishing. They're already, you know, they already have a garden. They're already or have... Uh, they're already shooting firearms. They already have archery. They're already boar hunting. They're already, they're already mountain biking. They're already four wheeling. They're already, you know, they are, you know, you see, what do they call those carts? They're like they're four wheelers, but they're like, it looks like a car instead of a motorcycle. You know, I forget what they call those buggies. Or they're already doing that kind of stuff. And if they just took that and started a YouTube channel, they already have taken that first step. If they just took their cell phone and started shooting some footage, they already got the first step. Um, but you, you you really have to try to address something because there's plenty of people just, hey, watch me go fishing. Plenty of people, hey, watch me run my four-wheeler. Plenty of people, hey, watch me do whatever, hunt or go boar hunting and spear hunting or whatever. Plenty of people already doing those sorts of things. So in a sense, we've sort of missed that first wave because if you look at a lot of the youtubers that who have been successful in the outdoors channels a lot of those people have one they've been doing it a very long time like ever since youtube has been around and two they kind of got in early on that first wave so how do you get in and just not get lost in the in the um how do you do this without getting lost in the in the in the in the shuffle right because if when YouTube first started, there was nobody putting up catfishing videos, and then somebody like Steve Gug Douglas starts putting up catfishing videos, and then people realize, wait a minute, I wonder if there's anybody doing catfishing on YouTube. Well, and they find Steve Douglas. <laughs> well, Steve, right? And so that momentum builds up early because he got in early. Well, then how do you punch through that when, you know, 
and how do you compete against that? And I'll talk about that a little bit more. But again, the first step, you got to find something you love doing. Uh, I imagine for many people, especially if you live down south, it's not a matter of finding that one thing. It's like, how do I, you got 10 things you're doing outdoors, right? And so how do you eliminate that? And so, and that's where I think, what, what, what sort of things have you done and found that are a little bit either quirky or off or not just what everybody else is doing. You do things in a slightly different way or like a crazy different way like I do. And people, you know, they, they kind of look at that and they're like, oh, that's something different. I hadn't thought about that. And then they'll click on your video just because it's not everything else that everybody's seen. So well, that's number one. I'll probably come back through these. And, I, you know, I don't want these to be a lecture. You guys, I talk to you, you talk to me, everybody talks to each other, that kind of thing. All right, the number two thing in this whole three steps to making a outdoors YouTube channel is learn about video filmmaking, the, the, the language of motion picture. That's something that I don't see a lot either. That doesn't mean you got to go to film school. I think don't do that. If there's, if maybe you read, maybe you don't, there's one book you ought to buy. If you're going to get started with this, that's how to shoot video that doesn't suck by Steve Stockman. He's a director out in, out in Hollywood and stuff. And he wrote that book and that's what I started with. And I was, I was just shooting videos, watching me go fishing like everybody else. And, and I was having some success because I was also doing mud motor building hot rod videos. That's what really, you know, got that first initial bump because essentially there weren't very many people doing mud motor videos or, or they were, but they weren't really doing it where they were actually teaching people how to do this and teaching people how far they can push their motors and teaching people that kind of thing. They weren't, it wasn't, there were just people, Hey, watch me go mud motoring. So when I started doing it, uh, I was one of the first ones that just really were teaching people how to do that. That's what gave me the first thing. But I, I knew that I wanted to better my videography skills and all that. Well, actually that's not true. I thought I was really good at what I was doing and I wasn't. And, I was trying to find sponsors and things like that. And I found a, a Chinese microphone company because I was knowing that I was going to need to get better audio than what was in the camera. I thought, well, wait a minute. I got a couple, I got a thousand subscribers or something here. I got a little bit going on and, you know, people seem to like what I'm doing. So why not go approach them for, um, why not go approach them for like a sponsorship? Maybe they'll give me a microphone. I can review it, that kind of thing. And this little Chinese lady says, why is your video so shaky? <laughs> I thought, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> you know, why is everything? You know, because at that time, I, all I had was the hat cam. And, and, and every time I moved my head, the, the video was all shaky. If you go back, look at those early videos, they were horrible. I hated them. I hate those videos. But I'm not going to take them down because they're still generating traffic and stuff. And I thought, man, maybe I need to, maybe I really do need to look up more information on how to shoot video. And so I got on Amazon. I found that book, How to Shoot Video That Doesn't Suck. And I thought, okay, well, obviously she's saying that my videos suck. So I need to learn something. So then that's what I did. I went to, um, um, oh, I bought that book, read it. I didn't even finish reading the book before I started doing it because he has it, you know, I've got it over here somewhere. He has the the chapters are very short. He has an actual cartoon illustrator to illustrate the points, and he gives a summary of everything right up front. So you can just start immediately, right? Right up front, you start immediately. And once I started shooting videos in the way that he recommended, that's when I started noticing my um, views go up. That's when I started noticing my um subscribers go up, views go up, watch time go up, all the metrics, everything everybody's clamoring about on YouTube, about how to get more subscribers, how do I get more views, how do I get more better watch time, all that started with just learning the language of video. Now, what we're doing here, I would not really consider this video. Oh, plan on flex seal my, okay, John he wants to know about he's planning on flex seal on his uh, John boat. Uh, I
I'd just rather get a new boat. <laughs> I'd just rather get another boat. That's why I'm building my boat, because my boat's leaking a lot. Probably could use Flex Seal. It would probably work. Uh, the question is, um, what what about the boat is leaking? Is it that the rivets are coming loose? Is it there's a crack somewhere? Is it just the design itself is just not all that? well built because if the design of the john boat is prone to leaks then the flex seal is just to me it's like a band-aid i mean i i think i would consider it definitely a temporary solution in things but um oh okay yeah the lighted jugs that's fine dude you know you get those lighted jugs whenever you can you know I think it'd make a good video to do it. Uh, I gotta find my soldering iron. I have no idea where I put it. It's here somewhere, but uh, just just whenever you can. So welcome anyway. Um, so flex seal, yeah, try it. See, but see, that's another thing. You, you're you're talking about putting flex seal on your John boat. Will it work? Well, you just fit. You just you just start. You you could take that and start your YouTube channel, right? Did you ever think about that? You're just trying to figure out how to stop the leaks in your John boat. How many other people out there have leaky John boats and would love to see someone experiment with this to see if it works or not? I have my opinion, but my opinion doesn't mean anything because it's not based in actual experience of doing it. See, when you start your own, a lot of the videos I produce is because I, I search and search and search for things. Like I remember handline fishing. There's nobody teaching handline fishing. No, I gotta go. I got so mad that I said, I'm just gonna do it myself. And that's what I did. You know, writing a book on it. You know, book didn't sell much, but <laughs> I did. <laughs> I, but that's what you do. So it, it becomes a difference in okay, can I put flex seal on my boat to seal it up from the leaks? Well, instead of trying to ask an expert, you just go experiment and document the process with your cell phone. I guarantee you're going to find it on it because my boat is leaking. My solution was to just build a new boat, right? And that's, you know, and what that did was, well, I've got this boat. I started building it a year ago, over a year ago, still haven't built it. And here it is a year later. And now I'm talking about incorporating that boat build into a film, right? So, once you get started in YouTube, the possibilities just keep coming because everything you do becomes potential material to be included on the channel. And that that's the reality of it. Um, and, I, and that's another thing people don't understand. That's why you study filmmaking, because filmmaking, storytelling, telling stories with motion picture is the core of what YouTube is. It's not about subscribers. It's not about, uh, it's not about all that stuff. Everybody's people who ask about subscribers and, and views and watch time before they've even learned how to shoot and communicate with video are, you know, they're putting the transmission ahead of the motor. It's like, well, <laughs> you got to generate the power first then, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> But uh, but that's it. That's why I say. So, again, if you want, if anybody, you know, whatever you're dealing with, well, how do I cast a, a, a bait casting reel? Well, that quest of learning how to cast a bait casting reel becomes a whole playlist for your YouTube channel. Right. Do you understand? Like me in my mud motors, I have I knew nothing about building motors. People. People watch your videos and they just automatically assume that you knew everything straight out of the womb or something, right? That's not true. I knew nothing. I, I'm not a mechanic. I knew nothing about fixing these motors and building these motors. I was just a poor man who had a simple John boat who needed an outboard motor to get me up and down the river. And I had looked and looked and looked for years and didn't find anything. Then all of a sudden, after a few years, I found... Swamp Runner, Mr. Dobbs down in Florida, who imports these Thailand long tail outboards that use just power generator engines. And I thought, man, that's pretty good. And I looked at the price. Price is what, 600 bucks?
for a six and a half horsepower engine, all included. That's actually less than that. It's like at the time it was like 574 or something. And I put that together and I had just, I, I, I hadn't even learned about shooting video well. I had just put it together and that that video of that small Swamp Runner kit that I put together, that hour-long horrible video is the still, I think it's the number two performing video on my channel to this day. And it's an absolutely horrible video because there's tons of people trying to figure out how do I get an affordable engine for my little boat so I can go fishing. And then I started doing, then I learned that, well, it's essentially, it's essentially using a go-kart engine and running the whole stinking river is my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, that's my thing. I Yeah. Uh, BWL, Black Warrior Lures, that's my... I use that on the on the um, the forums. Um, what's the forums? You just you just mentioned it. Yes, I, I I have posted on some of the go kart forums in various places because once I figured out that these engines were just go kart engines, you know, I figured well I can just build this thing like it was a small block Chevy or something. And so I got on OMB OMB old mini bikes forums. I got on a couple other go-kart forums, or, or, or I can't remember the other ones, and just tried to learn as much as I could about how to build these engines and get a lot of power out of them. Everybody was like, yeah, you can do that, you can do this. And, and at that time, there was a lot of people in the forums on the Swamp Runner forums. They have a very good forum out about building and hot riding these motors too. And I was learning a lot from them because there was a couple of guys who build drag engines and they build their own drag and they go drag racing on the weekends and stuff. And those guys are like real mechanics who actually know what they're doing. So I learned a lot from them. And then I took my 212 and decided I was going to, um, decided I was going to build it. And that first 212 engine, OMB decided to give me all the components for it, except for the few components I already had. Like I already had a good tailpipe. I had already done a stage one build and I was ready to just put a good camshaft in, yank out the governor, put a good rod in, a good flywheel in. Eventually, I got a really good carburetor like that uh, Makuni carburetor, the 22 millimeter carburetor. Man, oh man, that was a powerful little engine. I, it's my favorite little engine, but, but I blew it up, right? My point is that entire journey was the content for my channel for almost a whole year, right? That, if you remember that whole year, I almost didn't fish the whole year because I was always trying having to fix the engine. I was always having to work on the engine. I was always just like, oh, it was miserable that year. I couldn't fish. I, I missed a whole, almost a whole year of fishing, but that year was almost a whole year of content on my channel. And I, I, it was the journey of me learning about how to build these motors. So everything you hear me talking about mud motors today came from that year where I spent just documenting that journey on the YouTube channel. You know, it, and well, I think the best way to learn is to demonstrate learning, all right? I think the, because I wasn't really teaching so much as I was just showing what I was doing and people can learn from just watching me bumble around, they can see the successes, see the failures, decide what they're going to do for themselves. So, um, you know, I think, you know, yeah. So, Rusty, Rusty, you're on. I didn't realize you had snuck in here, dude. <laughs> I didn't realize you, people sneaking in. Don't say nothing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, and by the way, shameless plug. If you see the dollar sign there, you can click that. You can donate a dollar or two or whatever or whatever. And during the live stream, and that'll go toward helping me, you know, uh, make more videos like this. Or you do it if you want to. If you don't want, don't worry about it. Just um, and always blackwarrior.com. You can buy my um, products there, or whatever, and it's whatever. So uh, the point is, learn about video. Uh, and the the big point is, everything you do in the outdoors 
is fodder for content for the YouTube channel, whether you know how to shoot video or not. <laughs> and that's the bigger point. And I may just need to sort of change that because, um, you know, you know, and so, uh, you know, um, but anyway, point number three uh, is learn about video search engine optimization. You know, uh, you know, yes, YouTube is a video distribution service, but it's structured like a search engine. So you'll hear guys like Roberto Blake and Brian G. Johnson and all these guy, Daryl Eves, talk about, oh, YouTube is a search engine. YouTube is a search engine. And, and they're correct. It's a search engine where a, a, you know, it's serving up videos, videos. You, you go into the search engine and type in what you want. I want to watch some catfishing videos, right? So you type in catfishing videos. Well, depending on, and then whose videos show up? You want your video to show up, right? That is a skill that has been around ever since the internet has been around, right? It's called search engine optimization. Web builders, website builders, bloggers have been doing this for, well, a couple of decades now. And we're just applying it to YouTube and our YouTube videos. I mean, like this video here, the title of the video, I've done search engine optimization research, what they call keyword research. That, that's a keyword phrase that people are actually typing in right now to YouTube. And guess whose video is going to show up, right? Um, you know, the thumbnail has the same title. Uh, the, the actual file name in the video has the same title. The description, which you may or may not... Yeah, I did fix my squeaky chair. WD-40, dude. Let me show you. Oh, sorry. WD-40. I just greased it up, dude. It, like, totally doesn't squeak, so... I mean... I just keep it down here by the chair now, man. <laughs> the least little squeak, I'm just squirting, man. So it, it does pretty well. Uh, but anyway, I forget what I was talking about now. So search engine optimization, that's the third skill. And yeah, it is, you know, it, 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 you know, you can shoot the greatest documentary film ever. You can shoot the most awesome video ever and nobody will find it because nobody's searching for it right? You can't just rely on YouTube to just automatically take your video and blast it in front of a bunch of people just because you poured your heart and soul into it, right? That's that's one of those cold, hard realities. Now, a lot of people make the mistake, I believe, of they, they only search on, they only focus on the search engine optimization. They're, 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 they're worried, they're so worried about keywords and search engine optimization and 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 hacking youtube when you actually go look at their videos their videos are awful and you can't even watch their videos you know and i'm thinking really yeah <laughs> you know this type of video i really hate this type of video because it's not really video right video is about one thing that's telling stories by expanding and collapsing the forward motion of space-time. Right? That's what it is. This is real time. This is more like talking shop. This is fire sitting by the fire, just talking shop. After work, everybody's hanging out, talking about diesel engines. They've been driving diesel engines all day and they get off work, they talk about diesel engines. You know, That's what this is. And so uh, every video is titled World's Best Something or Other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can do that. Where is the dollar sign link? If you, Rusty, the dollar sign link, if you look at the, um, where you comment, where you type in your comment right below the line in the comment, you should see a happy face. You should see a dollar sign. You should see, this should be there. It should be in a little, on my screen, it's a little gray box. You just hit the dollar sign. I forget what they call it, actually. Um, super Chat. It's called Super Chat. 
it may be I don't know what it looks like on your phone or your computer, but just type in super chat. All right. You may see something called super chat. You just click that and you can type in whatever you're going to chat. And you, I guess, you know, so I have no idea what it looks like on your end, but it's a dollar sign and, it, and it's called super chat. It, your chat automatically gets shot to the top of the leaderboard. Right. And it's uh, it's just what they do. A lot of a lot of live streamers do that. If you pay attention to a lot of live streams, people will do that. You'll see somebody's you'll see somebody's comment just automatically get shot to the top it's, it's it's just it's just a way to you know you know you know it works really well for big channels where you have you know you have a thousand people chatting well if you if you pay to get your chat to the top your channel top and it'll be instant recognition by the uh the live streamer or whomever uh but it's really a way that you can directly contribute to the channel because it'll just be added into the YouTube advertising a uh, payment that I get you know whenever you know you cross the threshold or whatever um, and, and it's not that every video has to be titled exactly the same thing that's why you have playlists every video in this playlist is is going to be titled how to start a YouTube uh, outdoors YouTube channel and then at the end I'll put in three steps or you know, pitfalls to avoid at the end or whatever. And, you know, but that's just one playlist. And that one playlist may be 10 videos in that playlist. My playlist. And so that's another thing that I you got to learn, too, is that you need to structure things in a playlist, not just once you've sort of learned how to do some search engine optimization, you find a group of keywords, say, five or 10, even 12 keywords that people are searching for and people want to know about. Now you put together a playlist and you plan out 10 videos in that playlist, right? Now, when someone clicks on your thing, it's not just this one video. Whoa, he's got a whole playlist on this. So you got to get past just one video. You, you got to have a bunch of videos. And so that's how, if you go look at my homepage, or on YouTube, you'll see that. You'll see, like I did with the multi-species fly fishing series. I was doing some keyword research over Christmas and found that people were searching heavily for multi-species fly fishing. So I said, okay, I'll just do a playlist on that. And now there's what, seven or eight videos in that playlist. And this is another playlist that I'm working on. So everything goes by the playlist, not just so much. And, and even like my jug fishing series, jugging and and the River Explorer series, all of those are things people were searching for. Because, you know, I like the filmmaking aspect of it. I like the uh, those sorts of things. And so what I want to do is, you know, there's people actually searching for River Explorer, right? The River Explorer. And so I just said, okay, I'll just start a whole new show called River Explorer. And then that, that be a series in and of itself. So it's not just, so you combine the things that you've learned in life in your YouTube channel you learn a little bit about filmmaking, motion picture. You probably can't see it's all washed out. And then you take all this search engine optimization stuff to find what people are searching for. And that's how you build out your playlist. And that's how you ultimately build your channel. So let me, for those of you who just now, you probably, you, you never, I always do these whenever I feel like it. I can't, I just can't come up with a, time of day that I want to do it. I was going to go fishing today, but it's raining. I still may get up to the river and get some more footage for the film Sugarfly, but the three things. So how to start an outdoors YouTube channel in three steps. Number one, go through your life, find something you love and preferably something that's not being addressed here on YouTube. Right? Two, learn something about video or filmmaking or motion picture. This learn the language of motion picture. There's been a hundred years worth of movies out there. We've learned how to communicate with motion picture. And buy a book, How to Shoot Video That Doesn't Suck by Steve Stockman. It's on Amazon. And if all you have is your cell phone in that book, you can build a YouTube channel. I'm, I'm serious. 
And then the third thing is learn about search engine optimization. And the tool that I use for that is a tool called TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy, TubeBuddy, TubeBuddy. Okay, yeah, you see it on the comment block. Okay, thanks, uh, Rusty. Yeah, that, that's where it is. So, you know, if you want to contribute, if you want to do that, uh, fine. If not, then don't worry about it. You know, just, uh, you know, it's uh, the whole point is to provide, there's lots of gamers who do tons of live streaming and I mean, they'll like live stream every day. And so they'll have people every day, <laughs> you know, on their live streams and stuff donating like that and so it's just that it's a it's a pretty good deal i think it's called super chat so so that was number two you know learn something about filmmaking uh and then three learn search engine optimization and i learned that through a tool called tubebuddy tubebuddy i kind of i gotta find my link uh i should have my link i should have gotten my link i didn't think about this before but tubebuddy is a way because all these algorithms you hear people talk about all these People don't know it, but your YouTube is a search engine. And whatever you type in, there's all kinds of computers and all kinds of geniuses that are programming these computers at Google that are going to try to perfectly match what you typed in to videos that have been made. And you want to try to help that algorithm as much as possible. So when your title of your video is uh, what people are typing in, the thumbnail is what people are typing in. The, the description has people what people are typing in and the tags have what people are typing in the chances of your video showing up when people type in right go up right so that's what you want to focus on right and so a lot of people don't know that and so you really have to focus on your YouTube channel like almost like a second job right and that's the fourth thing you got to decide what your ultimate goal with this is. If it's just a hobby, it doesn't matter. Just get a camera and start shooting and uploading videos tomorrow. That, that's all you got to do. You got a cell phone, start uploading tomorrow. It just doesn't matter. If it's just a hobby, it doesn't matter. If you have any aspiration whatsoever, either to do this full time or part time or to make any money with this, you really need to do what I'm talking about here because that's what I did. That's what other people have done. And uh, because you really have, you know, if the, you know, that's how, that's what it takes because it takes a long time to build a YouTube channel. It doesn't happen overnight. Very rarely do you have someone who just uploads six videos and end up with 300,000 subscribers. It's very rare now. And, and I'm not sure it's healthy, you know, uh, because you didn't, you know, you put up the videos, but you didn't go through the process of learning all the stuff that I'm talking about here. So we're at 38 minutes. Uh, but anyway, uh, those are some of the things I've learned. Um, it's been a long, slow process, and that's often how life is. It's just, <laughs> it's always a long, slow process, and you're wishing it would go faster, and, and it, it, well, it just doesn't. Uh, I'm trying to think. If you want some people to learn from about YouTube and things, uh, you can go check out um, Roberto Blake. He'll help a lot. Uh, there's um, Brian G. Johnson. They help out a lot. Go check out TubeBuddy, TubeBuddy.com. I'll try to remember to get my link and post it. Uh, Brother Brown. Okay. Uh, Brother Brown says, "I'm so true. I'm having so much, so much time editing. I'm so impressed with your progress. Well, thank you. I mean, I, I really, I really see. I have a background in music. I was a musician in a former life, and uh, I played saxophone. I was an alto player, so I have an artistic sort of way of thinking about things. I, and that's what I think about it now. And so a lot of." that way of thinking makes its way into the um into the videos that i make um and so that you know editing is you know and i may need to i'm and what i may need to do is just put up a video editing course youtube video editing course to show you how to edit videos so they're quick fast and get your edit out uh i may need to just put that up i've been thinking about how might i do that 
Uh, do any of you guys find the editing hard or anything? Um, uh, because it's, um, I mean, it, it does take time to edit, but there are things you can do to edit quickly. And again, like I said earlier this week, the difficulty in shooting outdoors content is actually getting outdoors and shooting the content. I mean, it's easy to just, there's tons of people doing just talking head videos. There's tons of people doing videos where they're just sitting in their living room and talking about stuff, where they're just in their kitchen or in their attic or in their basement and they're just talking. That is easy. But when you're in, when you're, one of the things I've found is with outdoors channels of any kind, that just doesn't cut it. These video gaming channels, all I got to do is sit here and start playing video games and just start yapping, right? <laughs> That's easy. I'm sorry, but it's that's easy. If you're a mountain climber, not easy to climb a mountain. And if you're having to climb, a, it, it, let's say it takes a whole year for you to just mount an expedition. You're going to go climb Mount Hood or climb Mount whatever. What are you going to do for the rest of the year? Let's say you climb the mountain, right? And you <laughs> now what? You find them out. Is that what you're gonna do, right? So you, but once you develop these skills, you learn how to break those things up. So here's a scenario. Let's say you're gonna mount an expedition. Let's say you want to become a mountain climber. Let's say you've never, you've always wanted to be a mountain climber. You've never climbed mountains whatsoever, right? Well, first of all, look in your state. Are there any mountains? I'm in Alabama. There's not really. There's I know there's Mount Chia. I'm not even sure it's a mountain. And maybe it is, but it just looks like a big hill if you ask me. <laughs> but um, but there's definitely some rock climbing. I think rock climbing has something to do with climbing mountains. There's plenty, all right, because the Appalachian mountain chain starts right in my region, right? There's something else. There's, you know, uh, so look in your state, in your city and your county and particularly in your state to say just I'm, I'm spitballing here a mountain climbing video you never climb mountain you want to climb video first of all you, you're gonna you're gonna start reading everything you can you, you guys know how to do these hobbies and things that you like you'll start watching videos of people doing this stuff then you might go buy some books on this stuff and start reading and reading and reading I'm, I'm about to there's a book that's coming out on uh, Amazon about how to mount your first expedition. I don't really want to do mountain climbing, but I want to learn about mounting an expedition because one of the things that's in the back of my mind is, could I do a source to mouth trip of the Black Warrior River? Basically, that's an expedition. I've never been on an expedition before. How do you mount an expedition? I, I know how I would film it, but I want to actually like survive, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, so this is just water. And so you start learning about those things. That's the whole point I'm talking about going through your life, looking at the kind of things that keep capturing your attention over time, right? And so if it's mountain climbing, you're learning and you're learning, and then you go to some uh, outdoor stores. I mean, like real outdoor stores, not the Walmart or Academy. I'm talking about the real places, the real joints where all the people are hanging out and doing stuff. All right. See if there are, what are the skills of say mountain climbing? Well, you got to rock climb. You got to be able to, you got to be able to probably got to be able to ski cross country. You probably got to, you got to learn how to work with ropes. You got to, there's all this equipment that you got to learn how to do. And as you're learning those things, See if there are, you can see if there are either local people in your area already doing that. But the point is, you just simply start shooting video that you're interested in learning about this. And hey, this is where I'm going to start. Hey, I'm going to climb a mountain. And I just bought this book on mountain climbing and I really like it. And I bought some rope. And this is the first knot I'm going to try to tie. I have no idea what I'm doing, right? <laughs> right? And there's your start to your YouTube channel, right? And it doesn't matter if you're fishing. It doesn't matter if it's hunting. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's just, uh, and so anyway, peel and drag, headed to the cat 
Oh, really? Going live? Yeah. Yeah, I've never been to the Catfish Conference. Uh, have fun. Let us know. Um, I'm always sort of stuck here. <laughs> I don't have a way to get around all that much. Truck's old. The car is all right. But I don't want to put any miles on it. <laughs> so, yeah, if you're uh, so peel and drag, let us know. I, 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 those, I'm, I'm happy guys like Steve Douglas are doing that, putting on the Catfish Conference. I think that's big. Because catfishing is one of those sports, one of those outdoor sports that, uh, you know, got, you know, guys like Doug Stangy at In Fisherman have worked since the 70s in trying to raise the sport of catfishing up to the level of, say, the sport of bass fishing. And now that you have guys like Steve Douglas doing whole conferences on this issue, I think it's a great sport. I think, you know, for me, I mean, I'd rather catch catfish any day. Than, than bass because they weigh bigger they're kind of sloppy they don't really fight that hard i'm going to be honest with you they're kind of lazy if you ask me i mean uh, uh, the only the only time a catfish starts fighting is when he one it takes him forever to realize he's hooked <laughs> let's face it man and then when you start bringing them up it's not until after they start seeing sunlight that they begin to realize something's wrong <laughs> then they start fighting as opposed to say like a steelhead, once they're hooked, it the fight's on. So uh, and uh, but anyway, yeah, have fun at the conference and let us know what's what. I I enjoy watching some of the uh, the speakers on on YouTube. So uh, after they kind of get the conferences over with and things like that, it'd be kind of cool to one year get a bunch of my catfish floats out there and, and see if we can't get a booth. But I'm just not in the financial position to do that kind of thing right now. But anyway. Um, so, but anyway, are we at uh, 40? I try to go about 45 minutes an hour on these. Almost all of them end up being about 48 minutes. But uh, I'm probably going to continue to develop this thing in, um, on outdoors YouTube channels and building that. Um, because I think it's, um, there's some challenges, right? And so, and so, okay, so. Let's get back to the mountain climbing example. So you're learning to climb a mountain. You're learning to tie knots. You maybe bought a couple or three books on the thing. Maybe you, you, you decided, man, I really want to learn this as a skill. But, you know, um, maybe a book a trip on an expedition somewhere. That becomes content, right? Uh you know, one of the things that is always going to be evergreen in any sort of sport or any sort of outdoor is equipment. You're always going to have to have equipment. Equipment reviews are big on YouTube. Okay. That rope that you just bought to learn, do a review on that rope. You bought some new fishing line. Do a review on it. I just bought some Berkeley uh, fluorocarbon that I'm going to use as a tippet for my fly rods. I plan to do a review on that. Again, review videos will can really get you a lot of traffic because people are typing in. You know, well, how do I? How do I? You know, what about this brand of rope that I bought? It's it's a, is it does it hold up? Is it inexpensive? And you can just do a review on that rope and people will come and watch it in content. You, your channel will grow that way. Uh, I think the the most successful channels, the most successful videos out of the top four videos on my channel, almost the top three of them are review videos at some point. Like the, the, the number one, well, the number one video on my channel, uh, well, uh, the, the, the Swamp Runner kit, which was an assembly video of me putting my mud motor together, but it was also a review of the Swamp Runner small kit. It's still the number one video. My Helix SIGPI, SIGPS side imaging sonar that I had, that's still people, it's been, I, I bought that thing by like 2014 or something. And it's still bringing in views. 
because I just reviewed it. It's a long, it was probably like an hour long video or something. I had no idea how to shoot video. And my number three video is the jugging video from last year, I think, where I was doing the, um, what do you do? What do you do? The um, uh, jug fishing. I was trying to turn that into a documentary sort of series. And I, um, I need to get finished filming that episode for this season and then the number four one is my harbor freight trailer all my failures with that stupid thing and those are really the main videos so out of the top videos on my channel it's 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 the equipment review videos so if you're already into the outdoors or you're just getting into the outdoors look at the equipment that you already have and there's some of your first videos that you ought to be doing Review videos are easy. People love talking equipment because people love talking shop. People love buying equipment. And, right? And so that's a number one thing. Uh, so do lots of review videos in those early days. That, that'll, that'll help you out a lot. And then two, if there's something, if you've learned a cool trick that helps you do something either better or faster, save time, save money, do that, right? That's another great way to do it. Let's say you, hey, I found a way to, if you've never cast a bait caster before, I found a way to adjust the, 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 the magnet thingy so you won't overrun as bad. Well, that in and of itself becomes a video, right? Uh, so basically every, and I think that really becomes the bigger challenge is everything you're doing is fodder for video and a lot of times people don't want to take the time, stop, get the camera, shoot the video. They just want to go do it. See, if, if you just want to go do it and just want to go do the thing, it, your, your channel's not going to be that successful. Because you have to think about the people who are wanting to watch what you're doing and learn from you and see how it is that you approach doing things. So you have to slow down and stop. Like, if I'm going to go fishing, I'm not going to just jump in the truck and go fishing. I'm actually going to turn on the camera, set it, get a shot, get a shot of me pulling out of the driveway, getting a shot of me pulling into the parking lot at the boat ramp, get a few shots of me, right, uh, rigging the boat and getting it set up, and then, you know, get some shots of me, you know, cranking the motor and, and you know, and all that kind of thing. And then sort of the video starts, in a sense. A lot of people just want to get out there and just go. And the truth be told is once you start videoing all this stuff, it is going to get in the way of your fishing so if, or, or your whatever it is. If you really want to do the activity, leave the cameras at home, right? Because once you start videoing this stuff, it is going to slow you down because it's not about you anymore. It's about them. And that's another thing that is, uh, I think, difficult for a lot of um for a lot of uh, people who are getting into YouTubers, once they realize that, oh gosh, this is, you know, they realize, you know, this is actually work, right? See, as long as you're sitting at home and all you have to do is click the tap the screen on your cell phone to watch the video, it didn't cost you anything, right? Okay. Once you say, okay, now I'm going to take my cell phone, turn it around and shoot myself uh, going fishing. Well, now you just added extra work to what you're doing. Now I have to stop, film, and think about how I'm going to shoot, think about what I'm going to say, think about what it, it becomes a whole different thing. And I think a lot of people perhaps may not. Okay, we'll do, brother, stay tuned. Okay, yeah. All right. So, yeah. And um, um, so it becomes a different thing. And so and that brings up another point to where you really got to decide whether or not what time of life are you in right now? What season of life are you in? Is doing a YouTube channel going to be too disruptive in your life, right? If you're really busy, if you're really doing a lot of other sorts of things, maybe you don't have the time to do it now. Maybe it's just not a good time of life. I think that's a very important part. Um, for me, I've been producing content like this for all, going all the way back to the 90s, really. 
you know, my first blog or, or um, so this has just been on this is YouTube was just the next step, you know. And for many people, doing something like YouTube is the first time they've ever done anything like this. So whereas I've had blogging, which was all written, then came podcasts, which is all video, audio, then video, and then sort of combining it all. Most people don't have not had that long, long, long decade, almost two decades of just being on this path. They're just starting now and they're probably feel like they're having to catch up. And that's another thing. You're always going to have to be learning and reading and thinking. You're always, there's never a time where you're just, you know, just sitting around doing nothing, right? There's, you're always thinking. I'm, I'm rereading some books now, the documentary filmmaking book, because I'm trying to shoot the film Sugar Fly. I'm, I'm, always thinking about what microphones, cameras I have. And that's not to say that it consumes my life because Sundays you go to church, I rest. Uh, yeah, Wednesday, I basically took a day and said, forget it. <laughs> I, I did shoot one video, but I just, you know. Uh, so, you know, I guess the, another going into another question is how many videos should you produce a week? And we know three to five videos is what you need to do. If you're really serious about doing this as a is, 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 is more than a hobby. You're really interested in doing this as a business. You're interested in making some income, whether part-time or full-time. You're going to have to be getting out three to five videos a week. That's a well-established thing. Some people, not everyone agrees on that, but when you're like me and you're wanting to push yourself further, you want to produce a higher quality of video, a higher, you really want to get into filmmaking, well, it, it, it becomes not possible. One of the things that alleviates that is live streams. If you did one live stream a week, well, that's one of the three videos. If you did a one gear review video a week, that's your second video. And then the third video a week can be um, you teaching somebody about a cool trick you learned over the years of what you've been doing, right? And so there's three videos a week right there. And then as you learn, you can do more. Now me, I can't produce more than four videos a week without just burning out. <clears throat> Sorry, horse is getting voice now. Yeah, sidekick, no. <clears throat> Jonas wants to know what I ever have a sidekick. <clears throat> no, <laughs> I just the whole reason I go fishing is to get away from people. <laughs> so to have another person there, I, I just when I'm on the river, if there's another boat like a mile down the river, I'm coming unglued. I just <laughs> I, I just can't deal with it. Can't deal with it. Now for the film Sugar Fly. I probably am going to be interviewing some people because I know some people who are also fighting diabetes and trying to get over that. And I think it would be cool if I could get some interviews and things like that, but that's going to be more of a documentary film situation. As far as having somebody on the boat with me, no, nah. going fishing with somebody, no, nah. I'm just not interested. No, man, I just, I'm just not. <laughs> I'm a very solitary person. Um, I'm really not a people person. You hear me talking like this? This is the most I'm probably going to talk this like month. <laughs> right? I just don't talk much. I just really don't. Um, I'm not. I'm a very um, introspective, internal. You know, they call them introverts. You know, I, I think because that's what I have to do in order to produce the videos. If I'm, if there's somebody else there, they're sort of disrupting my thought process. They're just, I can't, I just can't even think. Right. And that's why I do things the way I do it. <clears throat> um, now, would it be nice to have a cameraman? Yeah. <laughs> I can't, you know, that would be nice, but, uh, um, but, that's why I do things the way I do it because when I'm on the river, I just, I just need to be by myself. I just, I can't, I just, oh, 
I just I can't I just can't really deal with it if there's other people there. All right, we've gone 49 minutes. All right, well, hang on, we've got nine seconds before the hour. I'm gonna sign on off here. Ugh. I may head up to the river, get some B-roll of the river because it is just swollen up. And um, but I don't know. All right. That's an hour. I'm done. See ya. I'm going. Probably.